They didn't, actually, it was just a run. They had to have a character run across an uneven surface. And that's what they did. The class is a, it's a lot more open as far as the assignments is selected. So we're doing that. Uh, Steve Ragsdale. Yeah. Alright. Anyways. That is well within your grasp, you guys. I believe in you. Most of you. <laughs> I believe in all of you. Every single one of you. Alright, so we talked a little bit last week about file referencing, but I want to reiterate how important that is to reference your files. Things will break potentially if you don't reference your file. If you work on a project where you've got a couple hundred people touching the files and you're not referencing, things will get destroyed very easily. Um, you want to make sure you reference your stuff. So I'm going to start the scene, right? Brand new scene. Let me just get this set up here. I'm going to uh, create a reference. And in the outbox, I've got some rigs for you guys. Um, this is my scratch draft here. But, uh, maximize. So it comes in. And you see it nice All right. Um, I'm going to get this file set up and start animating. I'm going to turn off the spatial window because I don't need spatial control. Don't worry about that right now. And uh, let me set up my preferences here. I'm going to set my settings. I'm going to change my centimeter to meter just because of my grid and my size there. I'm going to change my time to 30 frames per second. And I'm going to go to the animation tab and make sure I have weighted tangents. Turn these to spline and spline. This is all the same that we did with ball. Spline, spline, and then my time slider, I'm going to set this to play real time. Alright? And then I'm going to start this on like frame 0, and I'm going to go to frame 150, which is 5 seconds long. I probably won't use all 5 seconds because it doesn't take 5 seconds to turn around, but I'm going to set it like that. Anyway. So we did uh, weight and tangents, spline and spline for the in and out, right? We set it to meters. And uh, we set it to play with time, right? Okay. So for this assignment, what we need to do is we need to make the character do 180 degrees, which is he's facing in one direction, and now he's facing this direction. Do not just have him do this. That's that's. <laughs> you got to make him actually reposition his feet. So he's going to take a couple of steps. So if you're not sure how to do this. It's really easy for reference. All you have to do is stand up and then turn around and see what your body's doing. So your body is basically just a machine made out of meat, right? You've got your hips here and your shoulders here and your backbone connects the two. So this, these work in conjunction and that helps your entire pose of your body, right? So on your hips, you've got your feet, right? Your legs and your feet. And then here you've got your arms. Wow, that's really short. Okay. And your head, right? So if I pick up this foot, right, what's going to happen to the rest of the body? You're going to tilt a little bit? So, yeah. So if I pick up this foot, right, his right foot, watch my body, right? If I line up with this so you can see that it's straight, watch my body here. <laughs> Sounds creepy. Alright, so I pick up my right foot, right? My body weight shifts. I'm not lined up with this as much as I was, right? Because I have to shift my... Like, I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm doing this so I don't fall over. If I just pick this foot up and I don't shift, I'm going to fall because I don't have any support in my body on that side. Most of my weight is now off balance because my foot that's holding the weight is on this side. If I don't shift my weight, I'm going to fall, right? When you pick this foot up, your hips also rotate up a little bit to help pull this up off the ground, right? So think of like a marionette puppet, right? If the guy wants this side of the puppet to go up, he takes the controller and he lifts it like this, right? To make this side go up, right? Um, 
that's going to look great on camera too. Uh, that makes this side go up, right? So if you imagine like a pole between these, right, like a rubbery thing, and these do the opposite, when this goes up, these are going to go down, right? That's what your head and your shoulders do while you're turning. Usually not that severe that you're like all twisty like this. I'm turning, you know, but <laughs> it could be. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. That's going to really help. If you start to do a turn and you see that it doesn't quite look right, it's probably because you're not rotating the hips and shoulders, right? You also have to shift the body weight over. Uh, you're also going to go up and down a little bit. So when I'm standing, both of my legs are, you know, holding my weight. When I put my weight over one of my legs, right, because my feet are separate. If you think of this as like a tripod, right, from your crotch to both feet, right, your legs are, this is the farthest point right here from when your feet are standing to your crotch. When I, when I stand up and I put all of my weight over this leg, I'm actually going to get a little bit taller because now my leg is directly under my, my body weight, right? So when I'm standing, I'm, I'm like this tall. And then when I go over one foot, I'm a little bit taller, right? Just because of the way that the mechanics of this works out. So you're going to get a little bit of up and down on your guy turns, too. Um, just like I said before with the, uh, the tree analogy, right? If you think of an animation as like a tree, or your character as a tree, what part of the tree would be in why? Yeah, that was a question they actually asked me in an interview once. It was an interview here. What part of the tree would you be in? Why? Like, uh, the trunk. I don't know. They were like, why? I was like, because I connect the roots, the past, and the future. Which, yeah, that's a good answer. Totally. Out of my butt. Um, so, <laughs> here's the tree, right? Uh, here's your character, right? So there's a lot of similarities here where when you're animating and you're climbing a tree, you're not going to start with this stuff. This is all the, the extra details, right? You've got to get this part working and then the rest of the tree moves with it. So if I had a big machine and I grabbed this part of the tree and I shook it, the whole tree is going to shake, right? Same with this guy. If this is moving correctly, then the rest of the character is going to move correctly. If this is wrong, no matter what I do with the rest of this, it's going to look stupid, right? you got to get the core of your character working before you can get anything else working. So when we do, when we do our turn, we're going to work out the timing on the core of the character and get that timing right, and then everything else will fall in position. Right? Awesome. Any questions so far? Other than what I missed because I wasn't in it. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's, yeah. All right. So I'm going to set this here, right? And I'm going to really go to frame 20, set a key. Actually, first I want to get this guy in a decent pose. So I'm going to... Actually, you know what? Everybody stand up. Don't really think about it, just kind of stand up. All right, now stop and look at your feet and see how you're standing, right? Okay, your feet are not perfectly parallel like this, right? When they do a 3D model, they model it like this because it's nice and straight, it's easy to model, you can mirror the side, flip it, reattach it, right? Everything's symmetrical. When you rig it, you put the controls in, you can flip it, everything. When you are alive, you're not symmetrical, right? So, all right, you can it. So, what you want to do is get that kind of feeling into your hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this guy ready to animate. I'm going to kind of spread his feet out a little bit. Get him over one foot a little bit. Um, just pressing S instead of key on the ACC. Let me get his arms down here. Get a nice relax. Use a trick for hand, right? When you're trying to 
compose a hand they want to look realistic, or at least natural. Select them all, right? Move them together. And then starting from the index finger, deselect them and then keep rotating a little bit. Which gives you that natural curvature of the hand. Right, that was way more natural. Than Some of this is going to be like watching paint dry, but Um, Mel is my embedded language. 
Maya, as of I think three versions ago, started to use Python scripting, which is another scripting language, which is used not just in Maya, but over <coughs> across a lot of computer applications. If you really want to like be in high demand in the industry, learn Python, and you'll be all set. Um, so I want to save the script to show up as type ML. And you see it made this little button for me here. So now, rather than have to select all that stuff again, I can just hit this button, and it selected all that stuff for me. Right? That's super useful, especially later when we start doing more involved animations uh, where you're doing like full body poses and stuff. Now, when I close mine and I reopen, it's going to be gone. What I want to do is I'm going to save my shelves, right? Go to save all shelves. And you can also edit this, right? So I can go to uh, shelf editor and find that, that script, right? Which is the last in my custom shelf here. There's my command, right? I can change the name of it. I'll call it select. You can see it wrote that underneath it. It wrote select, because it can only display so many characters. Um, and if you mouse over it, it'll actually show you the script, what it does. Um, what I can do to save this, because the school's computer is reset every night, I can clear this, right? I can middle mouse drag this down to my shelf editor, and it'll write out the script, right? I can select all this, copy it, and then open up something like WordPad, right? Text editor, you use MS Word, you can use whatever. Paste it in there, and then I'm going to save this as my selection script, which I already did the other day. So let's do it again. I'll save that. Let me save my file. And also, you want to save these as my ASCII files. The reason for that is because it's all it's all text. Um, so let me quit this, right? And now I'm gonna watch my again. <coughs> you don't have to do this part. I'm just showing you why this works. Actually, I think my shelf will still be there because you have to restart the machine. All right, so pretend this isn't here. I'm going to get rid of it. Oh no, my shelf is gone. Uh, let me open my other scene that I had. There's my turn, but I don't have my script anymore. So to get that back, what I do is I open up my script editor, right? Clear all that stuff, right? And then I'm going to open up that script that I have, which was here. So I'm going to open up in Word. You ever thought you'd use Microsoft Word in an animation class that you All right, so I'm going to select all this, right? Copy it, and then in the script editor, I'm going to paste it. So now I've got my script back again. I can just grab it, middle mouse drag it up to my shelf. Boom, I got it. Right? Amazing. Actually, I have two of them. All right, any questions about that? That's kind of outside the scope of the turn, but it'll help you. All right, so I've got this guy. He's standing here, just pressing S instead of T. Um, the reason I, I keep it at 30 as well is because I want him to stand there for a second before he turns. Just so you can see. All right, so how do we make this guy turn? We could just do this, but that's stupid. You, you don't want to just grab this all mover and turn it because the speed is sliding, right? What you want to do is you want to take this and turn it, right? You turn his head, turn his feet, right? But first, you want to get the timing of this. So let's say, uh, let's give him two seconds to turn all the way around and see how long that is. Now, I'm not worried. I know he's breaking. I'm going to just try out the timing here. Let's see. All right, that's not too bad. Let me go into my graph editor here. I want to flatten these tangents so 
so that he stays nice and still. Right? Because look, this is what happens. Maya tries to help you, right? So even though frame 30 and frame 0 are the same, right? In between here, Maya is like, oh, he's going up there, so I'm going to take this line and I'm going to give a little bit of extra flex there, right? So now he's wiggling, right? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah, all right, in the middle there, right? You don't want that. You want to lock that off so that it doesn't move, right? You want to lock that off so it doesn't move. So I'm going to flatten these tangents like that, right? So now it's not moving, right? Um, I'm also, I want them to ease into that turn and ease out of it. So here, I want to flatten these as well. So he's going to kind of slowly come out of that, go faster, and then slowly hit that new pose. See that? So that's a pretty decent timing, I think. Like, about two seconds to turn around. Right? Certainly. Awesome. Okay. So what I'm going to do, now that I have just his rough timing, right? Because that's, that's the hardest part is figuring out how long it's going to take to turn around, right? So he's doing this. So once I know what this core of his pelvis is doing, right? Once I know what that's doing, I know what everything else has to do. I know how fast he has to move his feet. I know how fast he's going to turn his head around. I just have to actually do it now, right? So once you get the timing of this, of this torso <coughs> running, you're pretty much all set. It's just a lot of, a lot of keyframes. So when he turns, and this isn't final either. I'm going to go back in and start to like add some stuff to this. Thing. Uh, once he starts to turn, we got to get his feet going, right? So the trick with the feet is only move one foot at a time, or you're going to fall, right? So if I have to turn around, unless I'm standing on really loose gravel or ice, right, or like a really waxy floor or a shiny floor and I've got socks on, right, you can't just slide your feet around. They're, they're holding your body weight. You've got however much you weigh pushing down on your foot, so you can't just slide it, right? So you want to move one foot at a time. So when I'm moving this foot, this foot needs to stay on the ground. When this foot hits, now I can move this foot, but I can't move this one anymore. So it's a lot of back and forth, right? The other thing is that you want to make sure that you put your foot in a spot where you're not going to trip yourself, right? So if I'm turning, if I'm turning this way, I'm probably going to move the foot that's on that side first, right? It's easier than trying to step over my foot, right? Which, if you're just animating it and you're not thinking about it, you might move the other foot first because you got a 50-50 chance. You got half a shot at screwing it up, right? So just act it out, right? Just without even trying to think about it too much, just turn and see what happens, right? You usually move the foot on the side of, you know, where you're headed. So I can move this foot first, which means this foot is going to stay still. So how do you know when to stop it and when not to, right? Well, right about there, that's about as far as I can go before this leg would get really painful, right? So I know that by frame 48, this foot needs to be in this new spot. So I take this, I'm going to turn it. I'm going to move it over this way. And basically here you want to find a spot for that foot where, you know, as your torso is turning, this leg still looks like it, it could believably hold your weight and not be too distorted, you know what I mean? If you're pulling away and your leg's twisting all weird, right? Um, that's not good. Um, anybody ever have like a knee injury? I tore my MCL, which is the tendon that goes on the side of your knee. Um, at work, on free rounds, we had the character Chatty, so it's a flying squirrel. And we had giant mascot costumes, right? And I wear them sometimes. <laughs> and uh, we were in Vegas for an event, and my friend Matt Case, he dressed up as a rock doll. Big, Pull, like the kind of thing you'd see at Disneyland with a big head and everything. But while we were in Vegas, uh, we had a convention and we walked down the line of people to like shake hands with all the people that were coming in. And he walked into the casino. You're not supposed to be in a casino with your face covered. So the cops came and and I saw the cops. I ran in my squirrel suit and and he got he got stopped by the cop. And so when we got back to San Diego, that was the big story. Was that you know the cops chased Matt, right? So. Fast forward a couple months later, we're in the costumes again in Del Mar doing a kids' day event, and I was like, I gotta do something to one up Matt, right? So uh, I used to skateboard when I was a kid, right? Um, 
there's this girl in my neighborhood that I was trying to impress, and I used to jump on a pogo stick, right? And I can skateboard, and I can do pogo stick. So I was like, I'm gonna do it together. Jump on the pogo stick. I was like, hey guys, watch this. Jump on the pogo stick, hit the skateboard, <laughs> knock out from under me, right? And I got hurt. So that was the end of my skating career. So fast forward like 25 years, right? And now there's this professional skate demo going on oh in Delmar with skate ramps and half pipes and everything. And I'm in the squirrel suit. These guys are on break, but one of them left their skateboard. So I was like, I'm gonna go down the skate ramp oh. in the costume. <laughs> so then I got on the skateboard and I'm skating around on it and I was doing okay. And the kids are like, yeah. And I saw the half pipe. I was like, I've never gone down a half pipe. I want to do that, you know. So I get in the half. I get in. I climb up this the thing, right? And I'm on top of the thing. And I've got the skateboard. And all the kids are like, yeah, do it, do it. And everybody from work's like, don't do it. Because uh, you can't see, right? You got these little holes to look out of and breathe, right? And that's it. So I get on the thing, and I get on the skateboard, and I go down the ramp, right? And I made it down the ramp fine, but I got these big, wide rubber feet that you wear, right? And the foot went under the skateboard and got between the wheel and the ground and stopped it. And I fell, right? And when I fell off, you can't, like, really bend your back in that suit because you've got a tail attached to your back. <laughs> so when I fell, my leg on this side, you know how your knee bends like this? It bent like that. Oh. And I felt like this gush, it felt like warm water on my knee, it was my tendon ripping, right? So I stand up, and all the kids are like, yay! I'm like crying. Nobody can see it, because I'm in the suit. <laughs> so they, the kids come over, they have me shake their hand, and everybody's like all happy, and, they're like, and I'm trying to like walk, can't even put weight on it, right? And uh, so I go, and I, and I lean my head into Matt's head, and I was like, I gotta get out of the suit, I hurt my leg. So we walk up, and like 20 minutes later, we finally get back to where we're supposed to change, right? And uh, I take the suit off, and my knee's black, and it's like this big red. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So I tore my MCL. But anyway, <laughs> there's a snapshot of me right before I was uh, So anyway, uh, when you turn your guy, this is where the story is leading to. When you turn your guy, make sure you're turning so that the knee is kind of still in line with the toes, right? When you start to turn them, if you get to the point where the knee is facing away from where the toe is bent, that leg is tweaked way too far, right? So if you get to a point where you have to, like, it looks like it's painful, that's too far, is the point of that story. It's a long way to go, but you get it. All right, so on frame 48, this foot found its new home, right? So I know that this foot can't move until the, the other one stops, right? So I know that when this one stops, I can move the other one. So here, Okay, so now I can start to move that other foot. So I'm going to set a key on this one, right, on 48. And then I'm going to keep this moving until <coughs> this leg looks painful, which is going to be pretty soon, like probably right about, probably right about there, actually. Um, so on 62, this foot needs to find its new one. So I'm going to turn this around. And I'm not worried about him looking off balance yet or anything. Uh, still working. So that's probably good right about there. But now if I play this back, you can see his foot slides all over the place in between here, right? You don't want that. That was stupid. I'm going to my graph editor. And I'm flat these cases. So now that foot stays nice and still there, right? I'm going to save it too. Um, so now on frame 62, I can start to move this foot. So I'm going to set a key there so that that stays still until that point, right? And then right about there, that leg starts to look really painful again. Actually, probably sooner than that, maybe something like that. So I know that this foot needs to find its new spot. So I'm going to move this around this way. Maybe something like that. And in between here, you can see it's it's drifted all over the place. I got to flatten those tangents in there so that that stays still. Right? So now that foot is in its new spot, right? 72. So I know this one can stay there until 72, and then it's got to move. So I can rotate this around. It looks like that foot is going to be okay until the very end of the animation, even. So what I'm going to do is maybe about there, get this foot in its new spot. Thank <laughs> you. 